Yesterday's prophecies, today's headlines. This is the Hal Lindsey Report. And now, Hal Lindsey. Good evening and welcome to this edition of the Hal Lindsey Report. Recently, a favorite of the liberal left has come under fire from those who usually cheer him the loudest. Bill Maher is an atheist, comedian, provocateur, and was the host of the long-running television show Politically Incorrect. Recently, Maher had the audacity to use his vast media platform to criticize not his usual target, Christianity, but Islam. If you're a Christian, you must understand that this man thinks your faith is, well, stupid. In 2008, he made a film called Religious. It was supposedly a representation of religion in general. In reality, it was a shallow, mean-spirited hit piece on Christianity. Marr has made a career of saying horrible things about the Bible, Christianity, and Christians. I know he has offended millions of people by doing that, but it's only recently that the country's mainstream elites have turned against him. Why? Because this time he aimed his satirical comments at Islam, which liberals see as a protected system of belief. In an interview with Charlie Rose, Marr said, There are illiberal beliefs that are held by vast numbers of Muslim people that I don't think... A vast number of Christians, too. No, no, that's people. not true. Not true. Vast numbers of Christians do not believe that if you leave the Christian religion, you should be killed for it. Vast numbers of Christians do not treat women as second-class citizens. Vast numbers of Christians no, I agree with that. do not just believe said. that if you draw a picture of Jesus Christ, you should get killed for it. Writing in the liberal Huffington Post, Sanjay Sangoi observed Bill Maher is a liberal darling when he attacks Christianity, but suddenly becomes a demon when he criticizes Islam. For several years, Maher hosted a TV show called Politically Incorrect. Here's an example of that incorrectness. He said, it should in fairness be noted that in speaking of Muslims, we realize that, of course, the vast majority are law-abiding, loving people who just want to be left alone to subjugate their women in peace. On his current HBO television series, Real Time with Bill Maher, one of his guests on the show was an atheist, Sam Harris. Harris called Islam the mother load of bad ideas. The actor and activist Ben Affleck who was also on the show, was enraged at this comment. He said, you're painting the whole religion with that broad brush. The heated argument that followed got a lot of attention. The current article in the Atlantic notes that Moore's position is similar to the one given by Arthur Schlesinger, Jr., who is best known as President John Kennedy's biographer. In 1949, Schlesinger used the term doughface. In the Civil War era, doughface referred to Northerners who refused to denounce slavery. Schlesinger used it to describe liberals of his own time who refused to denounce communism. He wrote, the infiltration of contemporary progressivism by communism has led to the same self-flagellation the same refusal to take precautions against tyranny. But the writer of the Atlantic's article, Peter Beinart, said that Schlesinger would disapprove of Marr's comments because a liberal should be precise about what you're opposing. He gave Joseph Stalin as an example. At their best, the liberals of the early Cold War trained their fire on Stalin. When they began making sweeping generalizations about communism per se, they got in trouble. His point was that it's okay to criticize Stalin, who murdered millions of people, but not communism in the broader sense. That approach fails to even consider that communism itself might be flawed. Communism made Stalin possible. It created him. Without it, 
he would have been nothing more than a small-time street thug. With it, he took over a third of the world. With communism, he killed 40 million-plus people, even more than Adolf Hitler. But let's not forget communist Mao Zedong. He came near to equaling Stalin in killing. Communism enabled and inspired evil at a level comparable only to Islam in world history. Communism is a set of ideas. It is absolutely appropriate to identify those ideas, examine them, and criticize them. It should be the same with the other set of deadly barbaric ideas, Islam. But for some reason, it isn't. In the interview with Ben Affleck, Bill Moore asked, but why can't we talk about this? Affleck responded, it's, yeah. it's gross, it's racist. That description sounds terribly adolescent. But the point is, Islam is not a race. It's a system of religious, moral, social, and political ideas. No one chooses his race. No one converts from one race to another. But people do convert to the religion of Islam. In reality, one chooses to be a Muslim, or at least remain a Muslim if born and raised as a Muslim. Imagine an ideology that cannot be discussed or disagreed with. Ben Affleck believes we can't even talk about the issues surrounding Islam because to do so is gross and racist. If we can't criticize Islam or even talk about it for fear of offending the politically correct, then only one side of the story is ever heard. Is that fair to those who are considering the decision to follow Islam, especially young people? The word Muslim literally means one who submits. Before that submission, shouldn't people be allowed to hear both sides? Islamic law emphatically teaches that anyone who leaves the Muslim faith must be executed. Shouldn't others be allowed to point that out before the kid down the street signs up for jihad? Unfortunately, Ben Affleck is not alone in believing that Islam is a race. When the Congressional Homeland Security Committee held hearings on the radicalization of U.S. Muslims, a member of the committee, Representative Jackie Speer of California, called the hearing racist. Apparently, Congresswoman Speer doesn't realize that Muslims come in all colors. There are 1.6 billion of them, and racially, they're as varied as the human race. In reporting on Nadal Hassan, the Fort Hood murderer, a New York Times article quoted Victor Benjamin, who was a Muslim and former soldier. He said, when a white guy shoots up a post office, they call that going postal. But when a Muslim does it, they call it jihad. Columnist Raymond Ibrahim points out the absurdity of that logic. Notice the confusion as if a white guy and a Muslim represent different races. If a person of any color goes on a shooting spree while waving the Quran, screaming the jihadi pian of Alawa Akbar, or otherwise rationalizing his actions in Islamic terms, as did Nadal Hassan, then we're talking about a shooting spree motivated by a learned ideology or worldview that has nothing to do with the murderer's race. Since Ben Affleck considers Muslims a race, does that mean he also considers Catholics a race? In 1999, he starred in a film called Dogma, which relentlessly ridiculed Catholics and Catholicism. Wouldn't that make him a racist? Like most apologists for Islam, Affleck blames America for much of Islam's horrible behavior. Much what, we've killed more Muslims than they've killed no, us by not, an awful lot. We've we invaded need, more Muslims. I am not for more killing. Ours, an awful lot. And yet somehow we're exempted you know, from okay. these things because they're not really right. a reflection of a, what you know, we believe in. We did by accident. That's why we invaded we're Iraq. Not, okay. Okay. We're, 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 we're not convincing anybody. It's not, the propagators of political correctness exhibit a love for Islam that goes far beyond anything that might be considered intelligent or reasonable. 
the PC people say they want peace at all costs. But Islam, in its sacred Quran and Hadith, reveals it is a warring religion. Prominent characteristics of liberal philosophy, such as homosexuality, feminism, sexual promiscuity, and many other tenets, stand in utter contrast to a group that executes homosexuals, subjugates women, and stones victims of rape as adulterers. Here's what's hard for me to understand. Islam is liberalism completely reversed, and yet liberals defend it with all their vigor. This more than anything else reveals that they share something on a demonic level. They share the same darkness, and it should remind Bible-believing Christians that our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. And that victory comes not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord.